In today's video, I'm going to be sharing three universal principles to help you become a master of your reality. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to back all of this up with quantum physics and the case studies that are around that. So each universal law makes scientific sense to you logically and give you real life human examples so you can apply it directly into your life. So overall, the goal with this video is really give you a framework on not only how to understand these things better and apply them directly into your life, but also use them to get yourself out of a rut, overcome self-sabotage, remove bad habits, so you can really start becoming a creator of your reality rather than feeling like the world is against you or you're swimming against the current. Because trust me, I've been there. So how we're gonna structure this video is firstly, we're gonna introduce each law individually. Then we're gonna tie it to quantum physics, share a case study around Around it so you can see how this really ties together then give you a real life human example that you can see how this applies directly into your life and then from there give you a framework on how to think about this moving forward so you can apply this in all areas of your life and just see better results in the process so before we jump into the whiteboard let me quickly share really what we're looking at when it comes to quantum physics so before we dive in quantum physics if we look at it from a really simple perspective it's kind of like a special kind of science it looks at how super tiny things like atoms and particles behave in ways that are a little bit strange to us humans and it's taken us a long time to really understand what it's all been about but basically these things behave in strange ways because sometimes they can act like they're in more than one place at the same time which we'll get into in the second and third law later in this video but if we really zoom out the beautiful thing about quantum physics is that it's the study of how everything is connected everything down to the smallest little bug or the ant that's in the ground all the way up to the stars that are in the sky in our galaxy so the laws we're going to discuss are going to be based on the understandings that people have gathered from quantum physics so the first law we're going to talk about is going to be the law of vibration so the law of vibration states that everything in the universe is moving at any given time even the atoms that we once thought were completely solid and we thought that matter was as far as things went in terms of that it's now been proven that inside the matter down to the tiniest particle it's actually vibrating at a specific frequency and things that are more solid are just vibrating at a lower rate of frequency so the rate of frequency is how fast something is vibrating okay and the interesting thing about all of this is that even our thoughts our emotions and beliefs and intentions are actually vibrating at a specific frequency as well so you may have heard of things like the law of attraction the law of vibration these things before but this is rooted in quantum physics so with the law of vibration everything is moving nothing rests everything is always in motion and if we look at what emotions are emotions are energy in motion and when we feel these emotions they stir up a certain type of vibration and frequency within us now the next thing we have to understand is that every human being has an energy field around us okay that can span out for a far distance far beyond what we can reach and to be able to understand how this applies to emotions or a rate of frequency we can understand this by just drawing a diagram so let's look at it this way so when we look at these two diagrams we can really see the difference between the types of energy fields or the frequencies or vibrations that we can feel and experience when we experience certain types of emotions so when we look at this person over here this person here is feeling dense emotions they're operating at a lower state of vibration so they're likely feeling things like fear like doubt shame guilt lower dense emotions that really make you contract your energy field and we can even see from this diagram right here as our energy field contracts when we're stuck in these dense emotions there's actually holes in our energy field as well which means we are more susceptible to be influenced by others we are more susceptible to be led in the wrong direction and there's all of these different things that can play out just because we are in a low state of frequency now when we compare that to someone who is operating from a state of love compassion peace all of these different things their energy field will expand around them okay and you'll notice here that this can go outwards it can go upwards it's really just the aura that's around you this is why we have to understand when someone here is in a lower state of vibration and they come in contact with somebody who is operating from a peak state from someone who's op operating from love they're going to be influenced by these people because the light that this person is emitting will overcome the darkness that this person is stuck in and this is why when you see people who are you know probably maybe a little bit stuck in negativity and then they get around a really positive group of people they immediately start to shift because their field starts to expand they start to see the world differently new perspectives and energy that they experience from this other person starts to influence them because the light will always overcome the darkness so when we look at energy fields from a quantum level particles within the quantum field exhibit like wave-like particles which is kind of the field that we're talking about the energy field around us and it's constantly vibrating and interacting with other people so when you walk down the street you're intertwining with all of these different people's energy fields so this leads us to understand that even solid objects are actually 
operating at a certain rate of frequency and we're being intertwined with it at any given time. Everything moves, nothing rests. Now again, when we tie this back to thoughts and emotion, your thoughts and emotions operate at a specific rate of frequency. A very simple way to look at this is positive thoughts and feelings create high frequency vibrations, while negative thoughts create low frequency vibrations. And this is where we start to understand more about the law of attraction, because according to the law of vibration, like attracts like. You will attract certain experiences, people, and circumstances that are based around your specific vibration that's going to come from your thoughts, beliefs, and everything that you believe about the world and yourself to be true. So this means by maintaining a high frequency state of being allows you to attract more of the desirable outcomes that you want in your life. And this is where the law of attraction really comes from. A big misconception when it comes to the law of attraction is that you just think positive thoughts. But if you are emitting a low state of frequency and you just think consciously positive thoughts, you're still emitting a low state of frequency. So what we need to do is get to the root. And this is where emotions, this is where shifting your perspective, shifting your mindset becomes incredibly important because it's not just about trying to trick yourself into thinking positive thoughts. You need to actually feel what it's like to experience those positive thoughts. And this comes from things like healing, things like mastering your energy, your mindset, and your emotions, which is everything we talk about on this channel. So let's look at an easy scenario of how this plays out in real life. So if somebody over here who emits a high state of frequency, a high state of being, they're coming from a place of love, they're coming from a place of responsibility, they're excited about life and they're just operating and they're going with the flow of the universe. When you are putting out into the world that state of frequency, it will shift how you see the world and you see yourself. Your perspective will change dramatically. You could have someone who's operating from this peak state and someone who's operating from a low emotion state, a negative state. They could look at the same job, the same opportunity, and both see completely different things. One will see the opportunity, the other one will not be able to recognize the opportunity because of their low state of vibration. So when you truly start to master your mind, your emotions, and everything that comes with that and understand what we're talking about here, you do start to attract and magnetize the things that you truly want based on your intention, the focus of your mental energy towards something that you want to create. The goal is to match the state of frequency with the things that you want. And as you do this more consistently, you start to attract the money, the abundance that you want, the opportunities that will allow you to create that. And then the people that are going to help you do that, the friends who are going to help you and cheer you on rather than bring you down. The holidays, if you want to go to a tropical island, that's a palm tree, by the way. If you want to go and create these things in your life, this is where you have to start. You start with you. It always starts with you. And this journey as human beings and as a collective society, this is the journey from going from the mind to the heart because the heart is what emits love. And when we emit love and we get past the judgment and past the fear and the guilt and the shame, we operate from a high state of frequency, which means that the things that we want to materialize become much easier to create in our lives. And over the last number of years, there's been new science breakthroughs that shows that when we emit these positive emotions, these thoughts, these beliefs, and we operate from that state, it actually begins to rewrite our genetic code, our DNA, which means that the more we embody these thoughts, beliefs, and feelings that come from these high vibrational states, the more it amplifies our frequency and give out more light into the world because energy just travels through light. We expand into a higher level of consciousness that allows us to receive higher level information. This is where the likes of Einstein, Nikola Tesla, got their ideas for their inventions. They were operating at a high state of frequency and they were able to receive these pieces of information that helped them actually create the things that were revolutionary in our society. Let me share something else with you. You've probably heard of gratitude. Well, the reason that gratitude is talked about so much and keeping a gratitude journal and main maintaining that state of gratitude in whatever way you find works for you, the reason for this is that it helps you get into that higher energetic state. And there's no research behind this that shows that emotions like gratitude alter your brain wave frequencies, moving them into more coherent and more harmonious states that are connected to your heart, which allows you to raise your levels of vibration, raise your levels of frequency, and just basically feel better, <laughs> right? So there was a study conducted by Dr. Roland McCarthy at the Heart Math Institute, demonstrated that participants who practice gratitude on a continuous basis experienced a measurable increase in heart coherence and shifted into a higher vibrational state. Now, heart coherence basically just means that your heart is in tune. It's operating the way it is meant to operate. And if you've ever looked at Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, he talks about this all the time, because this heart coherence was associated with actually healing the human body, which also led to emotional regulation and just overall a higher state of well-being and happiness. 
if you really think about what this is telling us, it's far greater than just attracting the things that we want into our life. It's actually healing our body. And this is what allows us to actually attract the things into our life. This again supports the idea that our emotions, our feelings operate at a certain level of frequency, which actually influence our physical reality around us. Because when the heart is in coherence, it radiates an electromagnetic field that's been amplified. And the most incredible thing is, is that this signal radiates into the people around us, our environment, other animals. It starts to affect the environment around us. So if you think about how could we change the world? How do we get out of this state of fear? How do we stop these wars and all these things that are happening in the world? Because they're all just a reflection of how we're all feeling on the inside. If you really look at this, how do you change the world? Well, you change the world by raising your vibration. It is actually that simple. And now there is science behind this to back all of this up as well. If we go even deeper on this, we look at the study of epigenetics, which is the study of organisms and the genetic code within them. Epigenetics and science is now proving that our bodies are actually able to heal themselves with new beliefs, new thoughts, new intentions due to the vibrational effect that they have on us. When I first discovered this, I took a look at my life, right? There was a period where I was in a very, very low vibrational state. I was very in a victim mindset. I was, you know, struggling with things. I was in fear. I was in guilt and shame and experiencing all these things. I was always sick. I was, there was always something wrong with me. There was always like a, a thing that would come up on my lip, like a cold sore. There would always be something like a sickness or something where I had to go to the doctor or get antibiotics for. But then when I started to understand this and raise my vibration and really take the steps towards mastery and really just live that life and try to embody it as much as I possibly could, I have not been sick. Like I have not been sick once where I ever felt like I was in bed and I couldn't, you know, get up or anything like that. What epigenetics is now saying is that we are the programmers of our own code of DNA. The DNA is the software that we can upgrade the same way your iPhone upgrades its software. We can also do the same for ourselves. So what are some simple ways where you can start to raise your vibration? Well, the first one is going to be meditation, going inwards within yourself, creating that silence. And in this space, you're going to be able to understand, well, what is coming up for you? What emotions that you may need to deal with that need to be un understood or may to need to be healed in some way, shape or form? understanding more about how your thoughts work and understanding that they don't control you, that you actually have the power to control them. And they're kind of just like passing clouds in the sky and you can choose to attach to them if you want to, but you always have a choice. So meditation is going to be a powerful way for you to understand more about yourself and go inwards to introspect. The second thing is mastering your emotions, okay? Understanding that there's different emotions that have different rates of vibration and frequency and understanding that the things that you want to create in your life, the success, the relationship, the business, whatever the case is for you, what you must do is to match the rate of frequency and vibration to the thing that you are trying to create. If you're trying to create a great business, for example, you're going to have to come from a place of service. You're going to have to understand things like marketing and sales and business and really operate from a place of love, right? To be able to serve these people to a high level and really feel the fulfillment part of that. For you to be able to do that and to create this thing that you want, you must operate from that state so that you can serve people at a higher level. These different emotions, we have to understand how to navigate them, understand what, what emotions we're feeling on a day-to-day -day basis, because the emotions that we feel on a day-to-day -day basis eventually become an automatic program and they hold the beliefs, the paradigms, the ways of looking at the world in place. So if we want to create new thoughts, new behaviors, new beliefs, we first start with managing our emotions. Okay, so that's the second one. The next one is our environment. How is the environment that you're surrounded in right now either progressing and accelerating you as a person or your growth or whatever it is that you're working on? Or is it limiting you in some way, shape or form? Is there maybe a change that you got to make? For me, I know this was definitely true. I had to leave my home country of Ireland to go ahead and to travel and really create some space for myself so that I could understand more about myself, go on that internal journey and create a new environment for myself where I had more control over the energy that was around me because I was around a lot of negativity. This was affecting my energy field, which we talked about, and that caused me to be in a lower state of vibration. And it was like a, an uphill battle for me. When I left, it got much easier. And then I was able to return back with a new state of vibration, a new way of operating that, that was actually able to help other people that I was now surrounded by. So that's something you can look at as well, okay? Also, your workspace is gonna be a big part of this too. Everything that's around you. Do you live near a beach? Do you wanna be in nature? All these things are gonna play a big part in this. And again, you don't have to make drastic changes, but just look at how can you optimize your environment to raise your vibe, basically. Next thing is people. There's a quote out there, which is, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Now you can look at this a lot of different ways, but really what it comes down to is that the five people you spend the most time with 
all are operating from a certain state of vibration. If they're operating from a certain state of vibration, it's likely that if you're spending a lot of time with them, you're going to be influenced by that state. This is why if you're spending time with people who are really stuck in a low state, and again, there's no judgment here, it's just that we're all in our own journey and we have to understand these things. If you're really trying to progress in life and you're surrounded by people who are really pulling you back down, then it might be a good idea to separate yourself from them go on your own journey, come back and help them in any, in any way you can if they're open to that, okay? Again, we don't know who's going to stay in our life and who's not, but you have to take responsibility over your own journey in life. So the people you're going to be surrounded by are going to help influence you in either a positive way or a negative way, which is why it's so important to recognize this. Again, you don't have to go off and start cutting people out of your life, but sometimes it is optimal for you to make a change when it comes to the people you're surrounded by. Now, going deeper into these topics is something that we do inside of the Timeless Mastery Coaching Program. Right now, I'm working one to one with all of my clients to implement these different things into their daily life, help them grow their business, get higher paying clients, higher paying opportunities in their jobs, whether it's a sales role or another opportunity, and really overall just shift into that superior version of themselves that they have locked up inside of them. We do this through a variety of different protocols and overall just talk deeper about these things to really open up the pathways for you to start thinking differently and build a mental models required to really create the life that you want. If that sounds interesting to you, you want more information on that, just check out some of the links in the description. Now, the second law that we have is the law of correspondence. Now, this states that our external world that we experience is a direct reflection of what's going on internally, our internal world. Now, this idea is very tied to the idea of quantum entanglement, which is an idea from quantum physics, which means that everything is always intertwining and connecting with each other. Similar to what we talked about when it comes to the different energy fields that people have and operate on from a day-to-day -day basis, it's always being entangled with each other. You are being entangled with wherever you are watching this on, whether it's your phone or your laptop, you are entangled in the energy that's operating and coming out from the computer that you have with your energy field. It's all entangling with each other. The same thing is when we have people who are surrounded by us. We're entangling with our energy that way as well. Again, which ties back to you're the average of five people you spend the most time with. Now, the most fascinating thing about this is that quantum entanglement actually shows that particles actually remain connected no matter how far of a distance they are away from each other. So it doesn't even have to be in proximity, which opens up a lot of different questions around this, which is what we're going to dive into in the second law. So let's look at this in a little bit more depth, okay? So first of all, we have microcosm and macrocosm. Now, this law is another law within the law of correspondence that states that patterns and structures that are observed on a smaller scale, microcosm, things like thoughts and beliefs and emotions, are reflected on a much larger scale, macrocosm, things in your life like your experiences, your circumstances that come from those beliefs and thoughts that we talked about. We'll loop back to that afterwards. The next one we briefly mentioned, which is quantum entanglement. This is interesting because in quantum physics, this means that entangled particles or fields of energy entangled particles or energy fields like the ones that we talked about can influence each other's state of being so like the example we talked about somebody who is stuck in fear operating from a low state of vibration is now coming in contact with someone who's coming from a place of love and responsibility and what will be created is the average of both and that will be the frequency that's emitted when they come in contact. So this starts to demonstrate how interconnected the universe actually is. Our internal state will reflect into the external reality, which brings us the mirror principle, which is also known as the reflection. By changing your internal state, mastering your emotions, your thoughts, your beliefs, everything that comes with that, you affect the external world around you. Because the reality that you experience in the 3D world will always reflect back to you what's going on internally within yourself. Now, this is a beautiful principle because this gives us the opportunity to see in our external world the reflection back to us of the things that we need to work on to raise our levels of consciousness. So for example, if we get triggered by somebody and that's being reflected back to us and we feel a certain way, it's nothing to do with the other person. It's everything to do with us. Maybe it's an element of judgment. Maybe we have fear of looking a certain way and this is why we feel triggered by this thing. It's really about going deep into the reason why you feel triggered in the first place and when you do that, you start to untangle your mind and understand that everything in life is a learning experience. So even when your reality is reflecting back to you things that are negative, they can actually be seen as growth opportunities. Another way to look at the law of correspondence is to look at this quote here, which has been referenced a lot in hermetic philosophy, as above, so below, as below, so above. 
And this represents that everything in the micro is translated into the macro. Because the interesting thing about this is that even us as spiritual beings, we operate on different planes of reality at any given time, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the next law. But the phrase, as above, so below, is often interpreted to mean that there is a correspondence between the different planes of reality and that patterns, laws, and structures that are observed in one plane of reality, the micro, can reflect into those at another plane of reality which is the macro. This one originates from Hermetic philosophy. If you've ever read the book, The Kabbalion, I would highly recommend to check that out. It goes through these in more detail. So to look at some case studies and statistics around this in more detail, we can look at some experiments that basically show that entangled particles influence each other's state faster than the speed of light. And the most interesting thing about this is that it was regardless of the distance between the two particles. So let's bring this back down to earth. If we go a little bit deeper into entanglement, well, what does it really mean? Well, let's say this. Imagine you have two magic dice, and no matter how far apart you roll them, if one shows a six, the other shows a six as well. Even if one is on Earth, the other one is on Mars. Connection between the two is what we call entanglement in quantum physics. So there's a specific case study I want to share with you around this, and we're going to get a little bit scientific, but just stick with me for this one. So basically there were these scientists at the University of Geneva, and they created pairs of entangled photons, which are tiny particles of light. These photons are like the magical dice that we talked about. If you know the state of one, you instantly know the state of the other, no matter how far the distance between the two. So what they did is they went off and they separated these two photons, sending them to completely different locations. So they were several miles apart. So look at it this way. Let's say you had one dice in New York and another dice in Los Angeles. When the scientists changed the state of the photon in New York, the other photon in Los Angeles instantly changed faster than the speed of light so that they would match. And because this happened faster than the speed of light, this suggests that the two photons were communicating instantaneously in a way that completely defies our understanding of time and space. So this is really cool because this shows that the actions taken on one particle can drastically influence the other particle. One can have an immediate effect on the other, even if they're a distance apart. So it's the same as the magic dice. If you roll a six in New York, and you get a six in Los Angeles. It shows that there's a deep connection between these two particles. So now let's look at how this plays out in our everyday life. Just as a state of one photon influences the other, changes that you make to your inner world will reflect into your external reality. So by changing your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, you can actually have an instantaneous, immediate change in your external world of how you perceive the world around you. To simplify it even more, small things can influence something much larger in reality. Imagine it kind of like a ripple effect. So we look at this example. The micro is one brick for a house. The macro of that is actually the house itself. So just like every brick contributes to the overall house, tiny particles and their interactions at a microscopic level build up into large scale structures that we see within the universe. The same thing can be looked at when it comes to your beliefs, your thoughts and things that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis within your internal world. The micro is the core beliefs and thoughts that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And the macro is then your overall identity and how you experience the world on a day-to-day -day basis. This can influence your life direction, discovering your purpose, meeting the right people, meeting the right partner, creating a business, everything that you want to happen in life. It starts with the thoughts and your internal world and the mastery of that, the mastery of self. So how can we really apply this? Okay, so let's look at what's the first thing we need to do. Well, we need to have a mindset shift. As an individual and as a collective, we need to adopt a growth mindset where you believe that your abilities, your talents, your skills and gifts that you have can be developed over time through experiences and moving with courage in the pursuit of your goals. Understanding that things like your emotions, your thoughts, and things that you experience are things that you can heal within yourself through things like energy and meditation and understanding more about the depths of what that entails so that you can master yourself in your internal world, raise your vibration like we talked about, and see that translate into everything that you're creating in the world around you as well. Next thing then is looking at your self-image, moving out of a victim mentality, taking full ownership and responsibility that you create your reality. We've literally proven it using quantum physics physics, you create your reality, taking ownership over that this is the first thing that can help you transform how you view yourself, how you view the world and your identity that comes with that. This shift gives you the power to take full ownership and control over your life, which knocks the biggest domino when it comes to discovering your life purpose, helping and being of service to the world around you. And overall, just shedding your light into the world in whatever way you see fit, whether that's through a family, a business, a creative project, a job opportunity, whatever it is that you want in this world, you can do that by operating from a higher state of consciousness, bringing those things into your reality and then optimizing your life to perform in the best way possible to get the most out of your opportunity and create a great life for yourself in the process as well. So a couple of things you can do is to have a weekly or a daily reflection 
in your practice so that you are reflecting on the thoughts, the behaviors, the beliefs that you're operating from on a day-to-day -day basis. When you bring greater levels of awareness to all of these things, you can start to see what are the things that you can identify to remove, to replace, and to start thinking differently and build mental models around how to operate from a higher state of consciousness so that you can raise your vibration. And again, do everything that we're talking about in this video. Things like meditation, journaling, and just overall as being in a state of reflection is gonna be a very powerful way for you to start to identify these things. Also, working with people has been one of the biggest transformations for me because you have somebody else from a different perspective looking at your life and how you're operating with the information that you're feeding them so they can see things from a different perspective. You can see your blind spots and you can progress much faster. I found this to be one of the best ways for me to accelerate my growth in the process as well. And as you start to identify some of these limiting beliefs, you can start to replace them with more empowering beliefs. I talk about this in this video, I'll link it just above here. And you'll be able to really start to see the changes in the stories that you tell yourself, in the beliefs that you start to operate from on a day-to-day -day basis to allow you to really step into that superior version of you. So law number three is the law of superposition and possibility. I think you're really going to like this one. The law of superposition when it comes to quantum physics states that all particles exist in all possible states simultaneously until they are observed or measured. Now let's, let's bring it back down to earth. We can look at this as making a definite decision or intention, because when you look at any situation that you have in your life, there is multiple different routes that you could go. There's multiple different decisions that you could make. And all of them exist simultaneously until you set the intention to decide to set your path on one specific outcome, which means that when you do that, instead of having all of these possibilities exist, you have now brought that back down to one single possibility based on the intention that you have. So really the principle is looking at the fact that there's multiple different potential realities that could exist at any given time. And the act of observation, which is also the act of intention or directing your focus towards one thing, determines what specific outcome will materialize or come into fruition based on that intention and focus that you put on this specific thing, choosing one of the realities out of all of them that could potentially be. So when it comes to multiple potentials, what do we mean? Well, every situation and moment holds a multitude of different potential realities that could be brought into existence. Basically, we have a lot of choices that could be made to bring a certain outcome into our life. Just as a quantum particle can be in multiple states at once, your reality can unfold in various ways based on your perceptions and your choices. Now, perception is how you view reality itself, how you view the world, the potential opportunities or lack of, how you view yourself, your self-image, your perception of all of these different things, how you see it, what perspective you have are going to determine what possibilities you can see and what ones you can take advantage of. So observation and reality is where things get really interesting. Stick with me for this one. When it comes to quantum physics, the act of observation or deciding and setting an intention for a specific thing collapses a particle's waveform into a single state, making it a definite reality because the focus of observation is on it. In a similar way, you can look at your focus and your intention can collapse multiple different potential realities and instead be definitely focused on one specific outcome that you're moving towards. This is why setting intention, cultivating focus, getting into flow state on specific things that you're working towards is so important and it goes far beyond just getting work done. It's actually you collapsing all the potential realities that could exist and instead actualizing one specific thing that you want to move towards based on your intention. So how do we use this to create reality? Well, by consciously choosing where to direct your focus and your intention, you can actually influence potential realities to come into existence. In this case, your attention is the observer that helps to shape your experience of life overall. So if we zoom out for a second and we look at quantum physics again, principle of superposition in quantum mechanics means that particles can exist simultaneously in different states all at once until they are observed by an observer. There was a case study that showed an example of an experiment called the double split test. This famous experiment basically showed us that particles, which would be these things here, they basically behave as waves and also particles, and they can exist in multiple states until they are observed. When the scientists were observing which slit the particles went through, it determined their behavior and it ended up affecting them and collapsing them into one specific state or order. Now, this basically shows us that an observation, a direction of mental energy and focus on something plays a critical role in determining the outcome overall. And if you want to go deeper on any of these experiments, I'll leave some links in the description below. 
So let's bring it back down to work for a second, right? Let's put this into a real life example. What we just learned there implies that our decision, our direction of focus and intention as the observer, when we look at it from a quantum mechanics level, helps us determine what will become a reality in our life. By consciously directing our attention and focus towards one specific thing, we bring that thing into existence. So at every single moment in our life, we are faced with decisions to be made and the decisions that we make shape our reality. So let's say, for example, you're at, a, you're at a restaurant and you have a bunch of different things on the menu. You have burgers, you have pizza, you have pasta, you have all of these different things that you could choose from. All of them are different potential realities that could be brought into existence based on your choice. Right now, they all exist as possibilities. They are all simultaneously existing in the quantum field, waiting for you to make a decision and a choice. So the superposition in action is basically until you make a decision, all potential realities exist. They're all possibilities. And the results then come from you choosing, for example, the pizza in this case. When you choose the pizza, it collapses all the other potential realities that could have been brought into existence. And instead you have set your intention to eat this piece of pizza, which is your intention, which is where your mental energy and focus has been placed, which means that you have now determined a reality into existence. You have created the reality of eating pizza for lunch. This could also be looked at from a sales scenario, right? You have a salesperson over here. You have a potential customer, a prospect, someone who needs help over on this side. They're speaking on a one-to-one -one basis. In this scenario, the salesperson has multiple different potential realities that he could create based on how he approaches this scenario and the level of information that he receives on which one to choose and which one is going to be the best and most optimal way to go about doing this is going to come from his level of vibration his energetic field because if that is wider if he's coming from a high energetic state he's excited about this and he's you know he's coming from a place of service and love and joy and all these things he's going to have access to higher levels of information to be able to choose the best scenario that's going to help this person change their life. So he could go off and he could start emphasizing product features. He could focus on cost savings. He could start highlighting customer testimonials and case studies and things like that. Each approach presents a different potential reality for actually closing the deal. So the salesperson's choices and their ability to adapt based on the client responses and the information that they have gathered can now influence the sales strategy and the communication style, the tonality, everything that they say, how they're feeling to become in alignment with what is needed to actually close the deal and help this person change their life. An important note on this is that before you was going into the call to set the intention to serve this person to the highest level and to point them in the direction of what's going to be the most beneficial to them regardless of that whether that's the product or something else entirely setting that intention is going to allow you to show up better on the call and allow you to bring a potential reality into existence which is based on serving the person to the highest level in whatever way that looks like and then within that you also have intentions and focuses that you can move towards based on the scenario of the call to bring the outcome that you're trying to create that is going to be the most helpful for the person. And so you'll start to see that there's decisions within the decisions, within the decisions that we always have a choice to move towards in any given scenario at every second of every day, which means that regardless of all of these different examples that we talk through, you always have a choice. You always have a choice to change your life. That could be today. It could be a decision that you make to move in that direction because what you start to do is to collapse all the potential timelines that could potentially exist by you not making the decision. Because if when you actually make a committed decision to change your life, to do the thing, to start the business, to move towards something that you want to move towards, to go and ask the person out, when you commit to making the decision, you narrow the possibilities and you focus on the outcome that you're trying to create. Your intention will move you in that direction. This is one of the most powerful things that if we can start to adopt this on a day-to-day -day basis, we can start creating our reality much easier because at every second, you always have a choice. So this is how we can start to apply this in our daily lives. It's recognizing that every decision that we make, no matter how big or how small, opens up a range of different possibilities. And by making choices that are in alignment with your goals, your truth, how you want to create the life around you, making decisions in that alignment is inevitably going to steer us towards the desired outcome that we're trying to create. The next one then is visualization and intention. The interesting thing about our mind is that our mind doesn't know what's real and what's imaginary. So we can use this to our advantage. We can use visualization techniques to imagine and to focus on the outcomes that we want to create and really paint the picture of what we would like that to look like and get an idea of really what it looks like before it even comes into reality. By vividly imagining success or whatever it is that you're trying to create in your life, you start to align your thoughts, your beliefs, your behaviors 
with that outcome. And by doing this, we increase the likelihood of achieving this in the 3D world around us. The next one is adaptability. This can be a challenge sometimes, but what we got to do is embrace being flexible in our approaches. Like we talked about, there's so many different possible scenarios that could come into reality. We got to be flexible with how we're going to approach these things to make sure that we're not getting too tied into a way of doing things or how things should be. It's being flexible with how we approach all these different decisions and not reacting to things happening around us, but instead responding in a way that is flexible, in a way that is focused on the outcome we're trying to create, but not getting caught up in how things should be. This is acknowledging that circumstances can change and we have to be adaptable with our approach on how to create the things that we want. And the last thing then is just bringing more mindfulness and awareness into your everyday life, monitoring and adjusting your thoughts identifying those limiting paradigms and beliefs that may not be serving you, that may just be from a past program that you may have just been running on a day-to-day -day basis. Bringing awareness to these things is going to be the biggest thing that helps you transform because it was just the biggest thing that happened in my life when I started to meditate, when I started to bring more conscious awareness to my thoughts and everything around that. The ability to zoom out and to see that they did not control me. I actually had control over them. And you know, I speak to so many business owners, so many people in sales and it's very easy to get caught up in the how-to strategies, the tactics, the things that you think you have to do to be able to actualize. You know, people are asking like, what do I need to do to be able to get the outcome? And it's less about that. And everything that we've discussed so far, this is why it is so important to optimize your mind, to focus on your mind as the number one pillar that's going to help influence the world around you to create the life that you really want to create. It's less about the doing. And it's more about the being. I can honestly say, based on my own experience, that going deep in the depths of your mind, understanding more about it, going down the rabbit hole, becoming curious of how these things operate, it's going to be the best thing that you could ever do in your life. Understanding these things we're talking about and applying them into your daily life is going to be where the real transformation comes. So overall, I hope today's video has really brought quantum physics into a more digestible way to understand that when people talk about the law of vibration, the law of attraction, and all of those things that are out there in the personal development world, you can see that there is science behind them. There is things out there that we may not fully understand. We may not see with our naked eye, but they're there. And we can use these to our advantage, to raise our levels of consciousness, to serve people at a higher level, to create the world around us that we would like to live in and really help other people raise up in the process as well. It is up to us to first master ourselves to be able to have an influence over the change in the world that we truly want to create. So I hope this video was valuable to you. Drop a comment below. I want to hear what you're thinking. Was this helpful to you? Would you like to see more videos like this? Because this was really fun for me to make. These things are really fascinating to me. They're interesting. And I really like breaking them down in a digestible way because it helps me understand them by sharing them with you here as well. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, like the video. And also, if you want to go deeper on some of these things, I recommend just checking out this video here. I think you're really going to enjoy it. It goes deeper on some of the things we're talking about and also give you some tools and strategies on how you can navigate the world and really reprogram your subconscious mind to create your reality that you want. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.